Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have Tim Husudinov. Yeah. <laughs> I got it right the first time. Husudinov and uh, John Cameron and Doug Barbieri. Got it. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. We're at uh, www.accesssacramento.org on your internet on Channel 17 cable uh, access in Sacramento. Cable access uh, channels, different ones all over the place, as well as YouTube and Facebook, wherever you're watching, we thank you. Thank you, Richard. It's good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> United States President Donald J. Trump and European Commission President Jean, uh, Jean uh, Juncker, Juncker, Jean Claude Juncker, Juncker, Juncker probably. Uh, have called for, at their, at their recent summit, they called for uh, working towards zero tariffs, zero non tariff trade barriers and zero subsidies on non-auto industrial goods. That sounds like a pretty good thing. Uh, I good thought this start. was the anti-trade, uh, or the anti, uh, yeah, the anti-trade deal. Anti uh, president. Yeah. What, what's going on here, anybody? He's, he's all, almost sounding like he's becoming libertarian. You mean he's taking something off the libertarian <laughs> platform, what? <laughs> Gosh darn! It seems like it. I mean, they want to. They want to just. Uh, I think this is great, and I would. I would love it if we could have much, much more. Of How course, much confidence do you have that this is nothing? That there's anything, but anything beyond I, pure. Rhetoric? I don't have any confidence. Maybe he has something to say, but I mean, you know, the way Trump is. <laughs> yes, John. I we discussed this on a show not that long ago. That yeah. uh, this when when Trump pulled to Trump. Uh, I have never read the Art of the Deal, but people who have read the Art of the Deal tell me that every single thing he's done since he's become president and during the election is right out of the art of the deal. Um, so there's, there's a, a negotiating technique that works wonderfully well. And, and there's, there's a brilliant book out there, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow, uh, by uh, Professor Kahneman, <coughs> won a uh, Nobel Prize in economics, even though it was, uh, he's a psychologist about decision theory. And there's, there's um, something called anchoring and, and what you do in, in, uh, when you're trying to sell something or you're trying to negotiate. If you throw something out there, a number, no matter how crazy or how strange it is, and, and people perceive it, it will affect their buying patterns, their negotiating, anything else. That's why they put in MSRP a ridiculous price on the window of a car because they know that unless you're a master negotiator, you're not gonna go far from it. So what, what he did was he started a trade war. And, and if you follow the book in the, the Art of the Deal, what then this, what he's getting to now is actually what he wanted when he started the trade war. Because he said, all right, I'm starting a trade war. You all know I'm crazy, I'll do anything. You've seen me do anything, you've seen me be crazy. We're starting a trade war. Yes, I know it's not Republican, it's not capitalist, it's protectionist. I don't care because you guys are ripping us off. You've been ripping us off for generations. And the whole world said, yeah, right. And I didn't start a trade war. And he started a trade war. So now he's saying, you know what? Maybe that wasn't the best idea. Why don't we talk about like no tariffs and stuff? So Brilliant. If, if the world is. Do you really think that's what's going on? <laughs> I do. I, I, I believe it. Okay. I, I would like I, to, I would I'm, like to I'm, believe I'm, it. I want to believe it. I want but to I believe it. We may right, be convinced Fox whenever whenever Good. we have yeah. whenever we have no tariffs. Yes. Well, and, yes. and I'm not when saying we'll get to no tariffs, but I'm saying that that I actually hold out hope that we're going to get closer to no tariffs post um, this negotiating tactic than prior to it. Because There's one problem because he, he's using a uh, a distributive uh, negotiation tactic, which is a pie and everybody gets a, a certain share of the pie, win-lose. If, mm -hmm. if I win part of the pie, you lose it. As opposed to an integrative negotiating process where the idea is to, you're going to be negotiating with this person, not just today, not just on this deal, mm -hmm. but 10 years from now, 15 mm -hmm. years from now, 20 years from now. So you have to make sure that you maintain a good relationship so you have mm -hmm. repeat customers. Mm -hmm. And he is, I, I think, running the extreme danger of turning off customers for, uh, well, Chinese for soybeans. They can buy them from Brazil. They can buy them from uh, mm -hmm. other places. He's turning off the uh, possibility that we'll be able to sustain markets in manufactured goods, which can be manufactured in other countries. Mm -hmm. That's the risk that he's running. He's running the risk that in being uh, a bully and being uh, doing your bravado way of doing things, that doing the, the, uh, the integrative 
or the uh, I'm sorry, the distributive model of negotiating that he'll turn off all of our all of our uh, yeah. allies and trading partners. And so and that's that's the risk. I, and I absolutely agree. There's risk. And then I, I on the other hand, let's talk about the Obama uh, negotiating tactic. Well, he things, just he brought checkers is, to a chest board. Uh, which is, uh, I can't even put a sentence together without a teleprompter. Let me negotiate yeah. trade. Yeah. I mean, so checkers, checkers to the chess match. So he's, you know, the the we're terrible at diplomacy. The 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 Europeans have a thousand years of backstabbing and deal making and glad handing that makes our even our Congress and Senate look like amateurs. So I don't know if you can. Um, this might truly be the only way to negotiate toward what you and I well, want, and you know, what benefits the whole world, which is the other which is start off as a crazy man bully, and maybe people yeah, will come maybe. to the table because they certainly weren't coming to the table well, before but, that. But did they really need to? Because when you think about it, we uh, uh, the trade balance doesn't make any difference well, because you I, always have a yeah. trade uh, a balance of payments. So yes, yeah, so yeah, we had a trade deficit with China. So what? We bought cheap refrigerators and cheap uh, underwear or whatever the hell they were selling us, th uh, cheap electronics. They took the money that uh, they earned from that trade balance and they shored up our national debt. China is the biggest holder, uh, foreign holder well, that's, of national but debt But that's in, actually in the, the problem with the trade deficit. And that's not, just that's not a problem. Who else, if, well, if China doesn't buy the, buy the debt, who's going to? Well, and does that, does that not make, that debt just make them... Cruise. Make it, them Make them beholden to us. It, it means it means you're importing more than you're exporting. Doesn't make any difference <laughs> because uh, there's always a balance of payments. And if you have a balance of payments, who cares whether the pay, whether the the trade the, the balance comes from investment goods, which is what the what selling treasury debt is, versus trade goods. Well, it, in order to import more than you export, that means you have to be borrowing, and that's uh, yeah, the problem. Uh, yeah, well, borrowing is the problem, though, not yes. not trading. Yes. I, I, well, agree. So, uh, I agree. I agree. I agree. That's but it's a, it's a symptom is what it is. It's a symptom of an ailing economy. Yeah. That you, you are now in massive debt and you're, and you're just going downhill. It's getting and, worse and worse. And Russia recent, the Russia's central bank recently uh, dumped tens of billions of dollars of uh, U.S. debt. Yeah, US and, they're buying, and they're buying gold. Yeah, and then, uh, and then they just, their statement was, we're just diversifying and nothing happened. Yeah. Uh, Russia's holdings are nothing compared to China's mm -hmm. of, of our currency. But I yeah. found that pretty Very interesting. interesting. Yeah. Well, it's also well, part of the gold plan. prices. Apple pretty soon will have you know, they'll be able to lend us some trillion dollar company, Apple. though. Yeah, yeah the Apple. first one. Yeah. I like that, right? Wow. Uh, so moving on, moving on. Uh, you have an interesting uh, win from Pacific Legal Foundation, the Starry, Starry Night House. Yeah, this is, this in is Mount Dora, Florida. Well, this, I, and I, I, I raise money for Pacific Legal Foundation. That's my daytime job. <clears throat> um, and this was a very interesting one. There's a wonderful couple, Memhauser, I think, the name of the mom. They have a severely autistic adult son, and um, he loves um, um, Van Gogh. Uh, Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Uh, and so they had their their a fence outside their house needed painting. So he his his uh, autism is so severe that you know basically can't do numbers. He can't communicate with people. I mean, really high level. Um, and has a hard time finding his way home. So they thought, well, let's paint the fence with one of his favorite paintings, and then he'll be able to tell people if he ever wanders off where you live the the, the yeah. starry night, you know, the starry night, and they get there. So Mount Dora and Mount in Florida is the it's 161 feet above sea level. How they can call it Mount Dora, I do not know. <laughs> the highest point in Florida is 320 feet high. It's it's an inhospitable. I don't know anybody. It's a no. But anyway, so. The, uh, the, the uh, people in the town got a little too big for their britches, and they, they have on their books um, a sign ordinance that, that basically could make anything illegal. If you read it, you would just laugh that this is somebody's joke. Somebody got really high one night and wrote this thing, but it's ridiculous. I mean, it could, you, an arrow pointing somewhere, that's illegal. An exclamation mark, it draws attention to it, that's illegal. Any bright color, it's, anything's illegal. And so they said, you can't do that. You gotta, you, you've, you've got to paint your house and, and the, the, the fence in the same color scheme. So they painted their whole house starry night because you don't really want to piss off the woman that, that is at the center of this, <laughs> or her libertarian husband, by the way, who came to this country for political from freedom. Hungary. 
from Hungary, and he's like a, I don't know, PhD physicist. So I mean, they're smart people who love their kid, and they said, not happening. And then one of the attorneys at Pacific Legal Foundation found about it and said, All yeah, right. baby, <laughs> First Amendment. Um, and a local, it's hilarious, and I, I wish I, I had, I think it's the Orlando Sentinel, um, one of their, one of their reporters said, you know, have you ever, have you ever seen somebody like walking on a tightrope and they're not really good at it and it's over a pond full of alligators? That was, those alligators are Pacific Legal Foundation and the people <laughs> on the tightrope were the city fathers because this isn't going to go well. These people have won 9 out of 11 Supreme Court cases. They know what they're doing. You think they would go after this case and grab it if they didn't think it's like, Thank you. So um, they said, no, you can't paint it the same. Here's our, here's our uh, we're gonna fine you $100 a day and we're gonna, because it's bad, it's just bad and, and, and it was stupid. And so um, PLF went in and um, said, this is an obvious violation of uh, their First Amendment. And, and uh, not only that, but um, very credible, wonderful, nice people, very stupid. Not to mention property rights. And property place. rights yeah. and all the rest of that stuff. I mean, basically, all the amendments, they violated them all. So the, the good thing is, is that um, the, the, mayor, the mayor, the uh, mayor. They settled, right? They settled. Okay. Well, they settled by, no, they won't have to pay the fine. They, no matter what new uh, rules they have about signage and all the rest of that, this house and this fence are grandfathered in in perpetuity. And the mother's on the on the uh, on, on the, the board on the commission that that will uh, create the rules going forward. Public apology by the mayor. That thought, thought the, that the, was pretty the, good. Which the, the husband, husband insisted. The on. husband insisted. They must give us an apology. <laughs> and uh, and they're giving him a check for fifteen thousand dollars. I don't know why. Maybe to pay for the painting cost. Just for fun. And, and I watched I watched the public apology on uh, YouTube. It yeah. was great. It was. You know, this mayor sitting there saying, oh, well, we apologize. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and, awesome. and, uh, and, you know, anytime uh, First Amendment um, gets a win in this country, uh, the other case that, that we recent, recently won, um, Minnesota Voters Alliance v. Mansky, First Amendment win, which we're going to roll out and, and uh, you know, try to fix some of these crazy violations of First Amendments that are happening in university and government buildings and all mm -hmm. the rest of that. So First Amendment wins a good win and, and helps everybody in this country, <coughs> uh, except for maybe the ACLU, but that's a, that's a whole different story. But the question I have now is what the hell are you doing trying to win a, a case in a graveyard? Well, in the case in the graveyard, this is, um, the case is um, Nick v. Scott Township, uh, Rosemary <coughs> Nick, nice little old lady, nice lady. Um, so I got an 80-acre-ish working farm in Pennsylvania. Uh, Scott Township in Pennsylvania had this brilliant idea that because there's so many graveyards and, and scattered through rural Pennsylvania, private graveyards, many states allow, and everybody should, you know, allow people to bury people in their backyard because it's your backyard, right? You can do anything you want. So. Um, they decided. Well, she didn't actually kill them. No, uh, to <laughs> kill them, that's a whole different legal process. So, different statute. Yeah. So they, um, um, they decided in their infinite wisdom to put together uh, this little task force that identified uh, what they thought were uh, grave sites. And, and on Rosemary Nick's, on Rosemary Nick's uh, uh, land, it was basically a jumble of stones that. I don't know how they could identify it as a possible grave site. And then they wrote a statute that said anywhere in, in Scott Township, which I think is the same as a county here, I'm not sure, um, anytime during daylight hours, if you um, have a grave site or suspected grave site on your property, then anyone may enter your property seven days a week during daylight hours to go look at this thing. So let's say you've got cows out to pasture, let's say you've got uh, dogs, let's say you've got uh, operating crops. farm machinery, you've got mm. a not broken in yet H horse, or let's say you just don't want people on your freaking property because this is America, uh, despite no trespassing signs or anything else, people can go visit this supposed grave site. So that was their brilliant attempt. Rosemary Nick, in her infinite wisdom, said uh, this is a taking. 
you are taking my, the use of my property away from me and giving it to other people without compensation. I want you to stop. So she tried to go to federal court. The federal court said, no, 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 you have to pursue a regulatory taking claim through, at, through state court and exhaust all possibilities in state court before you may go to federal court. So she went to state court and said, I want to I want to stop this. I want this is crazy. They're taking the value of my property from me. I want to bring suit. And state court said, no, you can't do it until they actually fine you. And so Pacific Legal Foundation jumped in. Now, the problem is that 33 years ago in a case called uh, Williamson County v. Hamilton Bank, the Supreme Court of the United States made a horrible decision. And since then, they've admitted the the the. Um, the Supreme Court justice wrote the majority opinion, admitted that they made a horrible mistake because they took property rights, which should be the foundation of all other rights in this country, because without property rights you have no rights, and made it a second class right. You can take any other kind of, of claim to federal court. You can take a First Amendment claim, you can take a due process claim, but you cannot take a property rights claim. So. Um, our, our attorneys have been working for years to try to get the Supreme Court to review Williamson County, which is what forces people to go through this craziness in the state before they can get the Fed to look at it. And here's how bad it is, folks. You go through the state, local trial court, you lose. So you appeal. You go to appeals court, you lose. You go to Supreme Court in the state, state Supreme Court, you lose. Then you go to the federal court, and the federal court says, oh, well, this this case has already been thoroughly tried three different times, so it would be a waste of resources for us to try it again. Is there any new evidence or any new facts? No, we're not trying the case. So in essence, uh, any good land use attorney in this country, if you try to bring a regulatory property rights takings case, and property, again, is the fundamental right in this, in this country that protects all other rights, they will tell you not to bring the case because it's going to be a waste of time. So. Um, some of the Supreme Court, and I know I'm going on about this, but this is probably the most important um, property rights case in this country in 30 years. And it's important that the, the Supreme Court has actually agreed to look at this case in light of Williamson County, and maybe they'll correct their mistake. Well, good luck with so good important. luck on, yeah. on that yeah. one. Good luck. Uh, most of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the about three or four years ago, a guy, uh, put together a company called Defense Distributed, and he put on the internet uh, the, essentially the blueprints to make 3D printed, essentially plastic <coughs> guns. Mm -hmm. uh, he downloaded the information. He was uh, he was uh, reined in by the State Department, who said uh, sort of the Zimmerman thing. Uh, he was told that he was selling munitions by making gun manufacturing uh, blueprints available on the internet. 3D 3D uh, instructions. And uh, he uh, fought that. He went to the he went to court and said, "This is a, uh, a First Amendment uh, issue. I can't, uh, you know, uh, I have a First Amendment right to put in on the internet whatever I whatever I want to." And uh, eventually, the State Department settled with him just a few, a few just not, not too long ago and said, "Okay, go ahead, print." What's happened since? Well, unfortunately, eight states and the District of Columbia sued uh, the government Monday to block the settlement, arguing the untraceable guns were a safety risk. So and they're worried about the guns falling into the wrong hands. Of course, I think when he first, when he first got the settlement, the original settlement, like hundreds of thousands of downloads had already happened. And it's so already it's kinda, happened. So it's kind of like the cat's already out of the bag. Yeah. So it's sort, of, it's sort of like pretty yeah. good privacy. Is everyone's pretty good privacy. It's already out of the bag. Yeah. When they told him they couldn't. Yeah, and can, there's torrenting yeah. too, peer to peer right. sharing. So yeah. it's yeah. it's going to be infinitely so spread. Question about these guns, these plastic guns. Uh, the the body of the gun is plastic, but the barrel of the gun is metal. Is that correct? I don't know. No, they're completely nope, plastic. They're completely plastic. There's, there should be at least two different models. One is like a single shot, yeah. Yeah. and then the plastic melts, and basically you can't use it anymore. Yeah. And the the newer model, if I'm not mistaken, it lets you do up to a cartridge before the thing stops cartridge working. Cartridge is one up to a magazine. Magazine. Okay. My my magazine. Ma magazine. So it melts somewhere between one and six. Okay, so it's not a particularly well, and head? not a particularly long-lasting gun. Yeah. Costs a lot of money to make. And so the, the there, problem with it is that, right that it can't be detected by what metal detectors? Because it's all plastic. Right. Yeah, there's no. It's no serialization. Of course, uh, one oh. of the things the government wants yeah. is it is is yeah. for uh, one of the proposed plans yeah. is for them to sub once you get the permission to print it, mm -hmm. then you must submit it and get it serialized. 
and you so basically have to trail number. right yeah, yeah you, you, th then gone. then you basically have a paper so, trail so documentation so the problem is, is that not that they can't detect it in somebody's bag because it'll be as obvious as the uh, the leather man that they didn't find when I went through TSA the other day but the problem is that they can't Assign this gun to a particular individual Person, yeah. and, and they track can't trace them. It. Yeah, and they can't raise that. Well, yeah, that's that's there, right there are two now. issues here. One yeah. is the First Amendment issue. Can you can you say that uh, basically a software program is is uh, illegal? And that's mm -hmm. and that's what he won on. Yeah. Uh, that's what the settlement was about. The second issue is whether or not the whole idea of uh, homemade guns uh, without serial numbers, whether or not that should be allowed. And of course. Well before uh, 3D printing, people could make their own guns just by ordering parts off the, mm -hmm. ordering parts from a mail order house or and, and, and assembling them in, the, in their backyard. It's not that difficult to make a gun. If you have a multi machine, if you have a modern programmable machine tool, mm -hmm. you can program it to turn out any kind of gun you want. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's not. This and there's is not rocket there's science. probably, um, I mean these are effective weapons, ones that won't. Because I wouldn't want. A gun in my hand that I was pulling the trigger on, where I was es in essence playing Russian roulette with my firing hands. Like it could because blow up. Because when yeah. you say it melts, melt means instead of the bullet going that way, it goes that way. So uh, but it's supposed to have a high degree of success upon firing, yeah. but will not work past that point. Yeah. And and it comes in parts too. So if I'm not mistaken on that point, you could replace the the top part of it. Like in, in mm -hmm. like AR-15s, only one of the parts is considered illegal mm -hmm. to be in yeah, the complete the package. Receiver. The receiver, yeah. you can reprint that. Yeah. You can't stop 3D printing and advanced machining like that. It's mm -hmm. only gonna get more sophisticated yeah. and, and more available as, as time goes on. But of course, the, the gun uh, banners are going uh, absolutely ape because they say, okay, yeah. this is going to allow anybody to have a gun. So the yes, larger yay. issue, let's, the larger issue is: Is there any reason at thing. all why everybody should not have the not not? It's not about having guns. It's about everybody having the right to defend themselves, mm -hmm. to defend themselves against criminals, and more importantly, mm -hmm. to defend themselves against renegade governments. That, that was the purpose of these three D printed guns, not for offense, for defense. What kind of gun, especially the single shot model, are you going to use to go on some kind of killing spree? The argument I've heard about guns, oh, there's no legitimate use. It's only for killing. So defense is a legitimate use. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And Protecting and yourself is a legitimate, you know, I use. mean, you can't defend yourself with, you can kill people in a crowd with a truck. You can kill people with maybe a one or two with a baseball bat or, you a, know, sword, or a knife or, or a sword. But if you're a 70-year-old, God, I'm going to be that there soon. Maybe I should say 90-year-old person. Uh, who's maybe not strong anymore, who, who maybe you can't even yell for help, maybe you're not technically savvy, you don't have your, great equalizer. You know, your, your cell phone sitting there to mm -hmm. take your picture, record them, and speed dial 911. A gun allows you to defend yourself when, when the, nothing when the else brown will. shirts when nothing kick else will. the freaking door in. Mm -hmm. You can't do Go it for with a, a car, shot. you can't yep. do it with, with a... a, a a chain, well, a chainsaw might work. But anyway, so if the purpose of these things is to either defend yourself when your life is threatened or make sure people know that you can defend yourself if so your they life choose will not to. Be threatened. So it will not be threatened. Exactly and right. And the only people who don't get it actually do get it, but what they want to do is to is threaten control other people. They want you. to threaten other people's lives. That's it, pure and simple. Yeah. Facebook says it removed pages, probably involving uh, 3D printing. We're not sure, but <laughs> it's, it's removed uh, printing uh, involved in, in deceptive political uh, influence campaigns just recently. Uh, this week. Yeah, t tell us about that, Tim. Sure, I'll go again uh, a little bit into it. Um, what was it, 32 different groups? Some have existed as uh, early as um, uh, last year, in the middle of last year, uh, with very creative and uh, avant-garde names, um, almost almost uh, indicative of like a modern meme culture. Um, these these groups on Facebook were removed by the Zuck and his team of IT experts, and they've been they've been cleansing their security staff, fired their security director, reorganizing, restructuring because they don't want anything else to happen that has anything to do with the elections, right? But they met with uh, government regulators, congressmen this week. Uh, to submitted their findings that there's potentially some kind of um, <clears throat> coordinated effort happening again 
online on their site. Uh, that's that's meant is to spread to be, disinformation. Is it supposed to be the Ruskies again? Or? Well, it's definitely not my people, and my no. people are the Russians, so we're probably talking about something completely different, right? Uh, but supposedly, they're making, they're making a, uh, a correlation sort of argument that something could happen with these groups, but they've taken care of, uh, of that. Um, there's a lot of activity in those groups. A lot of it is really sharing memes. So we, we don't have access to the full details of those reports submitted to the oh, government. censorship. Right. Mm, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there, well, there's there's some censorship there. Um, I will probably know more in later this week well, and next I, week. One, as one of the things I, I, that I came across is is a, a report that somebody uh, put uh, a search for uh, for marijuana uh, on on Facebook. Cannabis. And, uh, cannabis or, or marijuana. Just yeah, the words. Nothing came up. Nothing came up. Mm -hmm. So on Facebook? On, on Facebook, yeah. So cool. there's. There's that going on. So, what do you, but what do you guys think about the libertarian aspect that it is a private company? Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, Facebook can do what it wants. The problem, of course, is that it's not Facebook. It's not necessarily Facebook doing what it wants. It's Facebook doing what it is being essentially uh, extorted into doing or forced into doing by the government. That's that's where it works. that's I, the can issue. I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, why? Um, was uh, deceptive political influence uh, completely okay and brilliant when the Obama group did it, the, Cam the Cambridge type stuff in, uh, in the last election cycle that he won, whereas now somehow it's wrong? Well, why was it possible for George Washington to entertain his supporters with beer bashes and whiskey bashes, uh, when, and it's not anymore because that would be considered, uh, you know, Buying an election. Buying an election, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, mean, most well, voters got to be drunk the way they vote anyway. I, so The big issue and concern here is that that was Obama's effort, his new age campaigning style, which was so successful, was like an internal job, mm -hmm. right? It was like his team. We, uh, they, they knew know, it was they it. Heard but, outside, but these, they heard outside people. They didn't do it internally. Well, they're, they're trying to figure out what these mystery groups on Facebook are, who, who really are... Are, are the ones involved. They've spent, uh, well, some of the groups have spent, what, over $17,000 in uh -huh. advertising that they've, that they've been tracing and it's funneled through offshore accounts, uh -huh. companies in different countries, right? So they're, they're <laughs> feeling just like uh, an A earlier Canada? topic from today that it's that time they're trying to, you know, stir the pot a little bit. I'm interested to see what, what happens. What fine, uh, just a little bit of time left. Let's give a shout out to Clark Kent. Tim? Sure. Uh, I'm a big fan of Superman. Clark Kent <laughs> Apuada. <laughs> oh, Apuada. Uh, yeah, so uh, the short scoop is he beat Michael Phelps' 1995 uh, world record. By one um, second. Over one second. In the butterfly. Yeah. One minute, nine seconds, and uh, 38 milliseconds. That's How the show that? for this week. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Libertarian kind of point. Thanks for watching.